I tend to run between the stools uh, of my own history, as it were, because uh, I'm like a penny with two sides, you know, as you'll soon see. Down to the studio. This was an old ruined cow shed. Let's get to it. Let's just get a bit of space. Uh, this, that one which is badly seen on the floor, and another one too, are all again from the same sort of theme. They unbolt, you know, this form here can actually be taken out so that they can be separated out. My f thinking of them was very much to do with an interest in the, in the dynamics of the way boats work and the cliffs work. And I was thinking quite a lot of shipwrecks too. And then I thought to myself, well, I can't use titles like that at my age because that would be a bit of a mistake. <laughs> This is a little bit like quite a few of my earlier ones, which for me is very much a Cornish type of image. I don't really think of the paintings as uh, being narrative of any particular thing. And they, uh, one of the most difficult things is in fact to, uh, to think of a title. <laughs> I know that this one, I believe it's called Dangerous, and I wanted it to be a dangerous counterbalance and, and uh, a mood. This is one of the, the, um, the ones that go with that. There are three. They have names like surge or swell or whatever because of the very nature of them being about movement and about space. And uh, I like myself to just use these simple means. I suspect I shall do quite a lot using these very simple means again. I seem to have got to that now. For a long time I've been involved in, in the way that you look across things and your eye travels across uh, and utilizes the space. These are all about the space outside the painting as well as inside it as one of the motivations. And. Um, Well, it's strange really, they ca they've come from elsewhere. They, uh, and so from that point of view, I haven't planned them or pre-packaged them or anything else. They've come from what the Buddhists call big mind as opposed to little mind. And so I'm just getting to know them. I bet you that if you were to come back in six months time, I could talk uh, the skin of a rice pudding about them because it would be so easy. I understood, I'd understand them then, but these are all new. And so I'm getting to know them just like anybody else. I set up in the, in the workshop then uh, six forms, which I anticipated going somewhere like these, but they didn't. I thought even that they were going to work as pairs, but they didn't. Uh, they seemed to want to go their own way. And so I end up now with paintings which have gone their own way. And uh, I mean, this for instance, took forever to, to make. It looks very simple, but in fact, the decisions had, had to be done such a knife edge that you could wreck the whole thing if you, if you didn't in tune. But the title, I just called it Stop. <laughs> now, there's two things. Stop messing about on it, and also because this is like a stop for the whole painting and helps uh, it have a cantilevering uh, energy, which is obviously very important to it, as it is to all this group. I didn't expect this one to come out like this. I was very suspicious in fact because it was just like a simple round in a simple round apparently but it's a heck of a long way from that and it gradually took on all sorts of resonances for me um, including the asymmetry of the of the whole image the way it plays a certain sort of volume which I haven't introduced for ages. I spent hours and hours in Kashmir once watching a rock interrupt a stream <laughs> and uh, that's always been in my mind but I find the same sort of thing here where you can just go out there and find a similar issue of one thing affecting another and I expect that that is running behind these three to a certain extent 
Although I was thinking of shipwrecks on this, I called it breaker <laughs> because it has to do with those sort of uh, rather frightening images in a way without being too narrative. Where have we got to? One, two and three. Four, one, two, three, four. The other one's around the back there, the danger man. Uh, I don't really know where the others have gone. But they're around. See, luckily they're not very heavy. I'll have to put it over here. You're not supposed to bounce them though. There is work still to be done on the edges and subtle things. But uh, a very good supporter and friend, Marja Orr in Tallahassee, that used to come to the studio and she'd say, uh, oh, you British, you, you, you just want to pretty things up. <laughs> and stop prettying them up, prettying them up, she'd say. I've never forgotten that because you have a tendency to slide past the station, you know. Well, you can see these, they're badly shown, but they have to be seen in an exhibition properly, of course. Uh, they, they have a type of dynamic whichever way they're put. These two were painted to go together one way or another, whereas this, with the form running through the picture area, uh, is a type of improvisation which uh, I have done before, but in a different way, because I never repeat myself. I may use a principle again, but never the image. This will be shown with the big red one. Uh, they can squeeze that through the door. And of course, the, sometimes you get offbeat ones. Which, this is like the last period with the, the way the colours on the back. You still have to clean it up a little bit. But I, I call it cheeky for obvious reasons. Because it's a daring sort of thing of chiselling it out and whatever, whatever. And... Um, this also has a spirit which is like the others. I don't know what I called it. Cheer. Make her. I'm allowed to be light, lightweight if I need as well. When you pull a painting out from behind wherever and you haven't seen it for a while, then it strikes you in a different way because you see it for what it is. At the moment now, I can't see these for what they are. Um, all I know is that they're as right as I can make them. If they, they, they live for me, and uh, there's nothing else I can say. Because often, you know, you tend to have ideas of, uh, of where a work should be going, you know, preconceptions, and to actually beat your conceptions down is, is a difficult thing to do. Because uh, you find that the train went through the station and you forgot to get off. You know, and then you wreck it. But a painting always takes control of itself. Well, in my terms, anyway. Some people pre-package an idea or work something out, and that's perfectly valid for whatever sort of work it is. But in my case, it is work that has to come, come through. I've said a, a little statement in the catalogue, which may, to some people, seem pretentious, but I do believe in it. You know. I'm in the middle. But... On the other hand, I, I do actually have masses of uh, thoughts about the various pictorial principles involved, structural principles, thinking about it all the time. You see, look at the things I've been pulling out from the press. You see all these boats which have come to tragic ends. Uh, they have si similar sort of feels. Um, and also the, the way that this... Uh, I'm sure he'd be very unhappy me, for me talking about his boat all broken up, just making it back. But th this sort of dynamic here and the water wheel from uh, in Syria, um, they all have qualities of structure and brokenness or dynamics, which are similar and yet they come from such different reasonings. Whatever you're looking for, you tend to find the food wherever you are. If you're walking down the the street, you may find something which is just gives you the information that you want. Uh, you just can't tell where you're going to get it from again. I've got to the point when I can let things be and let them reveal themselves to me over time. 
just like to anybody else. If, if uh, I feel that I'm controlling them in some way, they're usually dead ducks. As far as the question you asked before about uh, working on one theme indefinitely, uh, well, I've always felt almost insecure because I didn't. You know, I've even tried it at different stages, but uh, you know, the idea of a nice moral idea of consolidating the ground or this or that or the other, but that's not what it's about for me. It's about something much, much more. If there isn't any discovery, there's no reason to be it. It would be a, a waste of time. Hmm. While we've been talking, or I've been talking far too much maybe, I've been getting to know this painting here, which I didn't know. 